states in this book. So that's the reality. You see that the second life is a kind of a cartoon version of the reality. So it's it doesn't have the full fidelity of an actual photograph, but many of the general details can be captured. Uh, moving on to slide number 21, this is a, uh, a second life version, so we're, we're looking at uh, the location in second life of the, the virtual Amsterdam. And if you come visit Amsterdam, the, you arrive in the train in the, what's called the central station or the central station. And this is on slide 21. But if you see slide 22, flip to slide 22, please. There you see that same central station in an actual photograph. So compare, go back to slide 20, sorry, 21, and compare it to slide 22. You see, it's an approximation of the photographic reality. But in some, in some cases, the, depending on what you're trying to achieve, the approximation might be able to bring out certain salient characteristics to bring focus on just those aspects. Uh, slide 23. This is another location in Second Life. This is the inside of an Egyptian temple. Slide 24. Are you, are you there? Slide 24. Yeah. Uh, there you see in the distance, Manfred just showed you in Google Earth, the Arc de Triomphe, the virtual version in Google Earth. Here is the virtual version in Second Life. You can see it there in the distance in the, in the lower left. In the upper right is another tourist location in Paris. Uh, this is what's known as the Moulin Rouge or the Red Mill. That's a famous sort of dance place. Um, moving on to slide 25, there is also an Eiffel Tower in Second Life. And again, this is kind of a cartoon version, but it's, uh, it does give you a... S now, instead of looking down, as we did in Google Earth, you are looking up, and you have a definite sense of the scale of the Eiffel Tower. This is virtual scale, but um, the, you, it, does, it does give you a definite sense of being there. Uh, moving to slide 26, there is also uh, what's called the second Louvre. The, uh, so the Louvre is the famous museum in Paris. There is a virtual version of it in Second Life. And as you, if you can see the windows there, you can see inside. Actually, the, you can go inside. This is a big difference from the maquette. You can go inside a building and, and look around. And in, inside the, the, the virtual version of the Louvre, they have paintings and sculptures. You can sort of see one sculpture through the window there. Manfred, we're just about ready for your demo. Oh, by the way, we're here in Miami. We're talking to you from Miami, and there is also a virtual Miami Beach. So slide 27, if you look at slide 27, you see a little bit of what Miami Beach looks like. There's palm trees. Um, in just a second, I can show you the palm trees outside my window. Actually, today is not such a great day in Miami. We have a... Uh, a tropical storm, Noel, moving in. And so it's kind of gray skies and heavy winds today. But uh, you can always go to the virtual version and see better weather. <laughs> Slide 28 is a short list of, you know, Second Life, everything, everything that I showed you in Second Life, all these previous photos, were designed by the users. They were not designed by the by the owners of the virtual world. They're designed by create. They're the creative designs of the people that participate in this world. And so, some other places, you know, if you go to Brazil, there's this 
statue of Christ on the top of the mountain called Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. Paris, we showed you some of the scenes from Paris. There's also, Ireland has some rich scenes of Dublin. Um, there are some scenes from Italy. There's the, there's the Taj Mahal. In Japan, we have the, the two people in the audience from Tokyo. There's a the Second Life version of Tokyo. Uh, I believe one of the people in the audience was from Germany. There's, a, there's, a, there's Dresden and Frankfurt represented. Um, there's uh, some scenes. The, the, the uh, Mayan pyramid called Chichen Itza in Mexico is very, very nice. Um, other scenes, there's also Hawaii and Hollywood and, and so forth. Um, if you move to slide 29, the, uh, sorry, slide number 30, so 29, we're gonna, I want to tell you briefly about avatars. Uh, in slide number 30, there's an old cartoon of two dogs that are working on the computer. And one dog says to the other, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Uh, this is one of the insights of popular usage of the internet, is that you can actually, in, it's easy to change, change your personality. You can, you can pretend to be somebody else. Now, this has certain negative consequences that sometimes people are trying to be deceptive. But in virtual worlds, this is, this is, the point. You, you have the advantage of, of being able to play other roles. So we all walk around with our day-to-day -day identities, but in the virtual world you can look and behave and be another person. So for instance, slide number 31, sometimes I look like the guy on the left and sometimes I look like the guy on the right. So, depending on my mood. <laughs> Slide number 32. I also conduct certain kinds of classes with Second Life. And this is a picture, this is a snapshot of one of my classes. Uh, you see there, the I had about uh, oh, 25, 30 people in the audience. The tall fellow on the stage is my colleague, uh, Mr. Pai from Taiwan. And the fellow in the right-hand corner in yellow is my other colleague here, Greg. And now, if we're ready, I'd like to move on, slide 33, I'd like to move on to the demo. Manfred, are you ready? I'm ready. Um, okay, well, this is, uh, I'm logged into Second Life now. You see, this is my, uh, my avatar. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Quinney. In Second Life, your avatar has a different name than in real life. Could you point the camera and, uh, to the please? <laughs> so, um, and right now I'm in um, a Dutch village called Zaanse <laughs> Schans. They've created, they've recreated the whole village in uh, Second Life. And it's, um, it's an historical village. It's also a Dutch monument. Um, it's from the, the end of the 1800s, beginning of 1900s, and is very famous for its old um, farm buildings and also for its windmills. Um, the city exists in, in Holland. The people are living and working there, so it's it's an actual city, and you can go and visit it. So this is its representation in Second Life. Now, um, but I'll, we're, I'll, we're gonna, we yeah. have uh, two people here that are going to join you, Manfred. The idea is you're going to be the, the tour guide. And, yes. And so show, I'll show my colleagues. Exactly. Tom. So I, uh, I'll be a tour guide here. And um, oops, I'm going to walk into the tree there. <laughs> um, now, if um, Gregory and Pai on Ron's end can um, join me in Zaanse Schans, Okay, I'm now giving you a perspective of what these guys really look like. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I, uh, let's see, you guys. I, d I don't see you in my, uh, in my list, uh, so you have to, if you can, teleport to Zanthus Oh, in the, 
in uh, Second Life, the concept of teleporting <laughs> is when you move from one part of the virtual uh, world to another part, uh, it goes instantly and they call it teleporting. 